I have the pleasure to uh, introduce Rüdiger Weiss. He's a uh, computer science professor uh, from Berlin and uh, his PhD student uh, Bruno. And they will give a talk about math protected social interaction. Stage is yours. Maybe it's kind of a hobby for a mathematician to motivate uh, people to have a different view on math. And what I want to present with my colleague Bruno Kirchner uh, today is some combination of very hard mathematics, uh, very nice uh, but very genial uh, mathematics, and how to combine it in existing uh, application to provide a better way to protect social interaction and even provide something like authenticated anonymity. Let's start with one of my favorite uh, quotes from Bruce Schneier, trust the mass, encryption is your friend. Uh, if you make then a logical um, evaluation of the situation, you can say in some kind uh, of thinking mass might be your friend when you pro want to protect your privacy against uh, wiretrapping and uh, secret agents, these which wiretrap all, maybe all, or almost all the traffic around us. There is cryptography the one protection which helps. I think it's a very uh, nice uh, or int uh, at least interesting uh, fact that if you take a look on the situation that the government are not able or not willing to protect uh, their people from uh, secret agencies from uh, other countries to wiretrap all the information they present on the internet and if you use encryption you can make, make really a game changer because if you use appropriate cryptography this is a very strong protection for your privacy and we want to extend this in some direction to protect um, social interaction and enable uh, totally new trust models. Let's start with the stuff we have integrated uh, our protocols and the old protocols in that is uh, elliptical curves and uh, allow me to give uh, uh, introduction and the introduction is very funny uh, it's a statement from Gauss I citated by Hardy now which said that uh, if mathematics is the queen of science the theory of numbers is the queen of mathematics and it's also very interesting uh, because of what because of its supreme uselessness so uh, very clever mathematicians have made a statement that number theory is something which is very poor and very useless and now we are in a situation that number theory is one of the really main technology if we want to protect our privacy in the internet and let's make this uh, climax in, a, uh, in another direction and make a short statement to, to say that elliptical curves are because of their supreme non-uselessness uh, can be seen as queens of practical theory of numbers. So I want to make the statement that uh, if you think uh, mathematical problems are very challenging, uh, take into the consideration that the theory of numbers is around the mathematician as one of the hardest uh, uh, field of this uh, science. And in this very hard science, uh, elliptical curves are really some of the very challenging uh, candidates uh, for research. And so we really connect us to a very uh, special kind of mathematics if you use elliptical curves and uh, if you have uh, listened to my talks in uh, former camps on a CCC convention uh, you know that I'm a bit critical uh, in, in some aspects of elliptic curve nevertheless elliptical curves have a lot of interesting uh, properties and one of the very <coughs> very important in the praxis is that uh, it's using strata key lengths and so we have the situation that in a lot of embedded systems in a lot of personal devices and also in the field of crypto coins there is a very heavy use of elliptical curve cryptography and uh, this is the case even uh, though there are at least three 
uh, problems. One I mentioned first is it's very hard mass. Um, that is so hard mass that only a few uh, men and women can really evaluate elliptical curve in an appropriate way. Uh, second point is, uh, that's interesting if you think about embedded systems, you need very strong random on every signature you have to perform. This is something uh, which is usually uh, a big problem if you have embedded uh, systems where it's very hard to get random bits. And the last point is beware of quantum computing. And I have to acknowledge that uh, when I make the statement that elliptical curves have really very big problems if you have quantum computing. Usually that was some statement I was not so sure if it's fair in a specific way because we don't know uh, <coughs> the actual state of uh, uh, the research in the field of quantum computing. But in 2017 there was a really very nice uh, statement from Koblitz and Menes, a riddle wrapped in, the, in an enigma. And this is very interesting because they were discussed in uh, uh, a lot of pages uh, why it might be not a good idea to switch uh, to elliptic curves uh, regarding the problems with uh, quantum computing. And I make only one quote, and this quote says that uh, the, B, uh, the NSA has really statement uh, that they prefer uh, as are 3072 uh, uh, because it's more uh, resistant against <coughs> uh, quantum computer attacks uh, than the usually used ECC uh, 256 and maybe also ECC uh, 384. And really the main uh, statement is uh, uh, when we have quantum computers then uh, the uh, attacking possibility is very closely related to the uh, length uh, of the keys and so uh, I would make the statement that uh, even uh, elliptical curves with 512 bits uh, will not provide the same uh, security than uh, as are 4096. 3072 maybe also, but there I uh, would have to make some uh, deeper evaluation. So uh, I make the statement that it's uh, now uh, pretty content that elliptic curves might have uh, big problems uh, if we have a breakthrough in the field of quantum computing. So it's uh, very interesting also to evaluate uh, uh, cryptocurrency which use elliptical curves, and I have a good news. Uh, uh, there is a lot of features in Bitcoin which make uh, attack with quantum computers not so problematic than in a lot of other fields. Nevertheless, elliptical curves are interesting, are uh, widely uh, used, but uh, nevertheless take also the problems into the consideration. But I have also a good news. I told you that uh, we have elliptical curves which is hurry, very hard mass and uh, I have advised the um, uh, diploma thesis in mass uh, regarding elliptical curve in 1999. That's 20 years ago, and I have still not the feeling that I have a sufficient understanding of elliptical curve that I could present, for instance, a new elliptical curve for cryptographic proposals. And so I want really to state that it's very complicated mass. So, coming to the second point, we use blind signature. And there I have a good news, but because blind signatures are really very easy to understand. Even in a normal uh, exercise in cryptography, uh, you can present it within the first two months. And uh, this simplicity really uh, has a lot of nice uh, properties. For instance, the security proofs are very understandable. And they, uh, the blind signatures are mainly introduced by David Sean in uh, Crypto uh, 1982 and uh, had a first implementation in DigiCash, a company which has been founded by Sean and was the first really anonymous uh, digital cash system. Interesting uh, from a cryptographic standpoint is that we have really integrate a very new trust model. Uh, 
And we can this uh, trust model use in the field of uh, electronic voting and very actual, if you see some secure mixing uh, providers, use it for uh, providing anonymity for uh, cryptographic coins. And this was our, our idea. We have elliptical curves in a lot of fields. We, we may be a bit critical and non too enthusiastic about uh, elliptical curves. Nevertheless, uh, it's in heavy use. And as a researcher and as a hacker, it's interesting to, uh, to play around with uh, existing, uh, existing technology. And though we had really the idea to make really uh, Blind signature using also in the field of elliptical curves and uh, especially in open PGP. And this was a very fantastic work by uh, my student and now uh, colleague uh, Bruno Kirschner. And we, he will present it in the second part of this talk. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Okay, I stopped. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, as Rudy just told you, um, my part in this was that um, using blind signatures somehow um, or giving, more s giving blind signatures more to the open world was part of my master thesis a few years ago. So um, I'm first giving you a short introduction how blind signatures actually work. Or even better, what is the idea behind blind signatures? Because normally if you try to speak with someone about it, they haven't heard about it or don't have a clue what's actually going on. So the first idea you normally give to someone is the real-world example, how you would do it without uh, electronics. Um, and there you would take something you have, want to have signed, but the, uh, the, the person who will have to sign it actually should not know what, you, uh, what is on this, uh, on this letter. So you take the letter, put it in an envelope, and you also take a piece of carbon paper to it so that um, as soon as the person gets the closed envelope, uh, he or she can sign the outside of the envelope, and the carbon paper will actually copy the signature onto the letter inside. Then you can hand back, you, you can hand back the, the envelope, you open it, and you have a sheet of paper with a signature. Um, the idea for blind signatures is actually to do the same in uh, electronics. So. We need something that, uh, that allows us to encrypt data so that, it's not, that you can't read it. And then put a signature on it, decrypt it, and have uh, some kind of data with a valid signature on it. And this is uh, what you can see in the, in the graphics. Um, this has some problems, um, because normally you don't want to sign something you don't know. Um, if you sign something you don't know, it can happen really quickly that you uh, sign something bad or that you, you lose something you actually want to uh, yeah, still own. So you want uh, to verify that the person who you're going to interact with is only handing you in uh, valid information or something context, uh, context relevant. So you could just say, we are doing an, an election inside our company and it's on, we are only allowed to vote um, if you're inside our company, show me uh, that you're working here, or maybe I know your face, and then everything is fine. But as soon as you get into a bigger, um, bigger context, this doesn't work. And also, another fact is that normally you don't want the signer to know who you actually are. Because um, it could happen that uh, just from the case that he knows who's, who's going to take part in an election or in something else, going to, to sell something, if you go into the idea of um, cryptocurrencies, um, he can take advantage of this uh, fact. So you introduce a third party, the identity broker, which you, um, uh, you, which you use to um, uh, uh, authenticate against. So you authenticate against the identity broker. Uh, he or she will hand you in a certifi uh, certificate, and the signer will only know the public key to verify this kind of certificate. So as soon as you take part in the election or whatever else you want to do, um, you can just take, uh, hand in the envelope and uh, show the certificate, and the signer can go and verify the uh, certificate and say, that's fine, I will go and work with it. Another way, if you don't want to introduce the identity broker, is um, that you can actually do um, that you can actually do only do if you want to sign data that is somehow randomized then you could say just hand me in 100 envelopes i will open 99 of them look inside um, and if 99 of them somehow match the kind of data i would expect 
I will sign the 100, but this only works if the piece of data inside is somehow randomized, like I want to have a pseudonym, and uh, I doesn't care about if there is a prefix or a suffix or whatever, it's just completely garbage, and I want to have one of them to take part in an election, for example. Um, the next thing, well, okay, we have this idea of blind signatures. Um, how can we spread them? Or other people had the idea of blind signatures, and how can we actually spread them? And so we thought about how do you spread a good idea? Um, first thing is you could make it simple to understand. So try to explain it and just push the idea or, um, into the heads of other people. Uh, the other thing is you could simplify it as much as possible that other people are going to implement it somewhere else. And the third thing is um, show that it's easy to um, inject in already existing standards, or at least show that it's very easy to change the existing standards in a minimal invasive way that you can use it in. Uh, in. And there we moved over to OpenPGP, because um, we thought, especially for email encryption and uh, decentralized uh, communication, it's a very common used way. It's still not an official uh, standard, but it's, yeah, it's a de facto standard, because it's, uh, if you want to do, uh, use, uh, if you want to encrypt emails or other uh, decent, uh, decentralized communication um, in the last 20 years, it was uh, the way to go. And there we decide, okay, if you want to show that it's easy to integrate and it's easy to use, um, it should be flexible. So we, especially someone who wants to have uh, signed data, shouldn't be forced to create a new key pair or do something else, just reuse whatever is, uh, already exists. And it should we should try to avoid to change the signature definition of OpenPGP so that you can go and everything you have looks like a typ uh, typical uh, key signature or data signature or whatever. Um, and there should be almost no difference. And yeah, then we looked into OpenPGP and we, uh, we, we decided that there's actually one thing you need to add to make it somehow possible. And this is. Um, the, this blinding scheme you actually want to use. Because blinding schemes are almost identical to the typical signature schemes, like the signature scheme you use uh, for RSA or ECDSA. But sometimes you run into um, blinding schemes which need a somehow change definition of how to verify the signature in the end. And if you want to also maybe add them later or allow to use them, um, the signature must somehow state that which blinding scheme you actually use. But if you, want to use the, uh, if you want to allow the key reuse, you don't want to introduce a new public key scheme and new signature scheme for every blinding scheme, because sometimes uh, you can reuse a key for ECDSA, for example, for different blinding schemes. And therefore, um, there, it, it was necessary to introduce a small change. Um, here you can see how a typical signature in OpenPGP is actually uh, built up. It's quite easy. The, the top part is some metadata, like the version you used, uh, the signature type, the public key algorithm, and other stuff. This is uh, just meta information of the signature. And then you have three other parts. The stuff in the bottom is the signature itself, so the uh, designed data. The most interesting uh, parts, um, as, at least for this uh, work, was this, uh, the different kinds of subpackets. We have unhashed subpackets and hashed subpackets. The unhashed stuff is also just additional, yeah, it's not metadata, it's additional data you can add, but which is not necessary to verify the signature. So you don't need this information to, show, uh, to check if the signature is valid or not. Um, more interesting are the hashed subpackets. These are all information um, you somehow want to have if you want to verify a signature, like when was the signature created, was it already valid at a specific point in time, or... Uh, which blinding scheme actually is, uh, was used, and other stuff. So we decided that the blinding scheme should be part of the hash sub packet, because there we can ensure that if someone wants to uh, manipulate it, uh, the signature wouldn't uh, verify anymore, because it was changed. Yeah, um, this is yeah command line interface output. Um, it's mostly not interesting in here. You can just see that all the stuff you already had on the slide before is outputted on, on, on the command line. You have the sub packets in the middle. Um, there is, for example, the hashed sub packet with, the, with an ID of two. This is the signature creation date. And then the red highlighted one is the new introduced one. It's uh, a critical hashed sub packet in this, uh, this time. 
Critical means in here that if your implementation of OpenPGP doesn't know it, uh, it will recognize that it can't verify this kind of signature, and it will notice you that it wasn't able to verify the signature because it didn't understand this specific change. Uh, if it's not marked as critical, it could try to avoid. Uh, it could just try to ignore the information, and this is not uh, what we want in here. Next to then, it's uh, number 100 because it uh, it's marked as experimental, and we decided to use um, an ID. So, so the ID here you can see is number one, which is a ECDSA-based blinding scheme. There was also number zero. Um, which is for all blinding schemes, um, which use the same verification method they would use if you don't have blinding, just a typical signature. Yeah, and most important here is that for a user who actually received a blind, a blind a signature which was created through a blinding scheme, there is no difference in, verifi in verifying that the signature is valid or not. Um, he, will just, he or she will just use uh, the normal uh, command line interface or programming interface, whatever it actually is, um, there is just, is the signature in there and is the signature valid? So the line at the bottom, the signature one, was uh, one created through blinding. Yeah. Um, the information are still online. It's a few years old. I tried to get it back working in the last days. It's still not totally done because for some reasons I decided to do it with the web technology. Web technology is moving fast. Uh, it's not working after four years. So, um, yeah, feel free to look into. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks a lot. And uh, I want to really close with a statement uh, of uh, Edward Snowden some years ago. Maybe I have presented on the last camp. Um, crypto works. It's not a black art. It's a basic... Uh, protection and we must implement it and active research in it and this is uh, I think this is a really uh, very challenging task for researcher and hackers as I mentioned uh, if you want to protect your, uh, your, your, your your citizen in a state against really unlawful interaction from the outside then, um, in a political system, I make really the jokes f four years ago, the uh, government is not willing or not able to protect uh, European citizens against uh, US and other uh, secret agencies. And um, I have to acknowledge that after the change in the government in the United States, the situation has not become better. So, uh, the discussion we will maybe have in a field of Bitcoin, if we should trust mass or more than our government, I think in the field of uh, protecting our privacy, we don't have to make evaluation. It's very clear that we have the situation that unlawful uh, uh, secret agencies wiretrap citizens in other states. It's not law, uh, unlawful for them. They have special law that uh, citizens of, uh, of countries uh, which are not the place of the headquarter of the secret agencies are much less protected. This is also in Germany the case. Uh, but if you make really the statement that every government can spy on every other uh, government, you say, mm, even if our uh, government not be misbehave, uh, we have problems with so many other uh, agencies. And it's very clear, and it's, uh, we have really also uh, results in uh, politics that uh, sometimes uh, agencies are their friends in other agencies. If they uh, want to do uh, actions against citizens, they are not allowed. They tried to uh, make it uh, possible if they cooperate with other uh, secret agencies. And uh, to make a very clear statement, uh, crypto is a protection you have only, only trust in mass. Uh, and um, this is open science and uh, the best resul results in cryptography come from public uh, research. And so this is really a very important basis protection. And uh, what I stated out here, we have a lot of uh, advanced crypto protocol where we can really modify new trust models. Uh, if you take a look at the 
old protocol of digital gas and electronic voting, you find a lot of uh, surprising ideas. Uh, really um, doing really strange, uh, almost magical uh, stuff. So if you just make the idea, we can provide uh, a really private uh, electronic coin. Electronic coin you can duplicate as much as you want, and making this possible in the field of uh, DigiCash with a blind signature is really amazing. And what's even more amazing, uh, I make a lot of statements in the first part of the talk that elliptical curves are very hard, very hard to understand cryptographic construction. Blind signature are not very hard to understand and are not very hard to implement and really provide another uh, level of protection for many social uh, interactions. And uh, so I really want to invite you to take a look on the mass as I as I told you elliptical curve is maybe a bit a hard starting point. But blind signature is really pretty easy to understand. And easy to understand is not only good to implement, it's, only, it's also good for mathematicians because they can really prove very easily properties of this field. And uh, to make it very short, uh, blind signatures are understood, are easy to implement, and uh, have provable security margins. You have to uh, take a close look what you have exactly proven when you just talk about uh, proven, proven secure cryptography. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh, uh, blind signature build a very interesting uh, level. And uh, I had some, some years ago where we have the funny and this time very uh, successful pirate party. They have really discussed about uh, participation with liquid feedback and so on. And really, there is a lot of uh, cryptographic research uh, uh, which is in the market since, since the 80s or the 90s, which we can really use to improve privacy and making a lot of stuff uh, possible. And so, really, the two messages we have, uh, cryptography is very important, integrated wherever it's possible. And uh, this is one thing I'm a bit more optimistic than in a lot of other fields if I compare it with our last talk uh, on the camp four years ago. I have to uh, acknowledge that uh, cryptography has been grown in a lot of fields. Uh, uh, using HTTPS is not a very as exotic uh, hacker hobby anymore and also a lot of uh, uh, instant messenger using very good public, uh, publicly evaluated cryptography. Um, uh, something I just, it's so simple and so understandable for, for, the, for a lot of people, uh, not only in the hacker community, is that we uh, should use everything as open source and of course also Bruno's work is open source, so take it, improve it and uh, think about really problems. Uh, one of my favorite PhD thesis I've read was a thesis um, uh, from a student which provided, I think, 1.6 million different uh, signature schemes. Uh, so blind, uh, blind verification and so on, and make a statement, now we have 1.6 million different schemes. We are heavily looking for application to use it. And this is also my statement. If you rethink trust models, and uh, really a trust model where you can, you, you must, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the certifications agency, you have not to trust them that they uh, record your, your, your key number they have signed because they don't have it. And if you make a really a certification with this protocol, it's, only, uh, it's also a legal uh, protection for the certification agency in, in some scenarios. And really you can use a lot of uh, practical problems uh, just uh, using the right living time of keys, uh, using different keys for a different property. And what I really want to, to make a statement is um, that we hackers should continue in this work. And if you work in other fields, if you think about new trust models and new social interaction, uh, talk to your local cryptographer because they have a really rich uh, rich box of, of tools lying around. And uh, 
A good starting point is, as I mentioned, blind signatures because they are pretty easy to understand and uh, are very powerful to use. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Rudy and Bruno. And we have a lot of time for Q&A, so there are mic microphone angels. One is over there and there's none other. So. Uh, Signal to him or just walk over to him. <laughs> that wasn't a wave, that was a dog wagging its tail. There's one. Thanks. So what technologies other than blind signatures do you see as being important in this field which recently have um, lost patent protection and were, and were discovered a long time ago? Uh, zero knowledge, for instance. Uh, this is a whole family. Uh, which I really also would enjoy to present here, but uh, it's a bit more difficult, uh, Mas. The idea is you can prove uh, some properties without uh, presenting your secret. And this is, for instance, loose in that cache, for instance. Uh, there are some applications in the outside, and really zero knowledge protocols are very interesting points, but uh, from a mathematical st uh, standpoint, much more involving than uh, the protocol we presented here. Here is just a, uh, yeah, sure, uh, some simplification. It's just a multiplication with a random number and exponentiation. The main proofs are very easy to understand and a good starting point. Uh, if you are then uh, you have enjoyed this uh, challenges, take a look on zero knowledge. There is really about 20, 30 protocols which are interesting and should be implemented and. Uh, it's a bit, a bit scary that uh, we make a small uh, field uh, in this thing. You know, with the technology from uh, 1982, and I think this was at least one of the first implementation in 2016 or 2015? 16. 16. 15. As you see, more than 30 years. And uh, really, this is my, 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 my request for the mathematician. Uh, try to communicate it more, uh, more and maybe only a bit simplified and, and start with a thing. But uh, on the other side, people which have uh, the questions how we can improve, uh, for instance, uh, electronic cash protocols. Uh, I give a uh, talk about uh, different blockchain construction uh, the day after tomorrow and it's very clear you have the situation that in a, in a public blockchain every transaction is readable for uh, till the end of time. And uh, if you don't use cryptographic solution, it's a complete nightmare. And even if people say, yeah, okay, uh, secret agency might not attack me, if there are data and if the agencies in, then uh, I have to acknowledge that some hackers have not the high moral uh, standpoints we have. They are really, um, in short, uh, if uh, a secret agency can, can hack it, um, other people can hack it too. And this is a really dramatic game changer and uh, if you do something like uh, like like uh, Mpensa or Libra or even Bitcoin, you can uh, wake up in a, in a completely a privacy nightmare. And so I think you have even in the field of cryptocurrency a responsibility to provide uh, privacy on the lowest level. And here is really a very good low level. We are, we are here at the bits. We make manipulation on the bit layer and you can not attack in this layer. We, we protect one layer. There are a lot of other problems, but this uh, layer is mathematically pro protected and this is a good way to do things like that. Okay. Yeah, um, you explained the idea of uh, the blind signatures. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more of how it's actually doable, like um, does it, de I, as I understand, probably you have some something encrypted probably with a symmetric encryption and you want to do the signature with a asymmetric encryption? No? Asymmetric encryption. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, no, actually there is no um, symmetric encryption. It's all done in the asymmetric way. So you use uh, 
public-private key pairs uh, on both sides. But mainly you make one multiplication with a random number. Yeah, or you can also include it. But there is no so symmetric no, encryption no, no, inside. No, it's no symmetrical cryptography. It's uh, uh, the main proposal for blind signatures have been as a scheme. And as a scheme, it's just a multiplication with a random number. And then very, very basic uh, mathematical uh, change of the formulas. And in the field of elliptical, it's a bit harder, but not much. Okay, any more questions from the crowd and maybe from the internet? Big. Ah, there's one question from the audience. Have you seen any um, interesting applications of uh, blind signatures in recent years? Not many, but uh, as I stated, uh, there are cash protocols which have not been so successful. There have been voting protocols. Uh, I think some discussion and, and, and one clear statement. Uh, I'm even with strong cryptography, uh, I'm not a friend of uh, electronic voting. I think this is a good place to stay on paper. And if somebody which loves mass, which loves cryptography uh, statement, uh, it's better to make uh, election uh, with a paper way, uh, something we uh, know in decades and centuries. Uh, it's a good idea. Uh, in crypto, we can solve a lot of problems, but uh, these problems are not the main problems uh, where we are against um, uh, electronic voting systems. Nevertheless, uh, cryptographic uh, solutions can make electronic voting schemes uh, much more secure than the actual situation outside. But uh, nevertheless, I see the practical problems uh, there uh, as so important that we should not mess around with voting. Uh, voting is from a philosophical standpoint uh, only point, the only spiritual point where we uh, uh, distribute power in a democracy and we should not mess around with this. Uh, last statement, uh, as I mentioned, uh, maybe if you take a look uh, in actual um, mixing schemes uh, for digital currencies, there are some protocols which using blind signatures, so um, not many, but some uh, application using uh, blind signatures outside. And we hope we can uh, improve that because this is a reason why we have uh, chosen OpenPGP as a uh, worldwide accepted standard. And so if you want to play around uh, with the system, you can use it in this uh, TPG world. OK, any more questions from the audience? That's not the case. Then thank our speakers again with a warm round of applause.